Um, like Bruno, I have the dubious honor of trying to communicate the last three years worth of development. Um, and it's been a very busy three years in Sam in about 20 minutes. So it's going to be very high level and go through a bunch of different things. Um, but we're the whole Sam team is happy to talk in more detail later. Uh, I believe a lot of people in the room are familiar with SAM, the system advisor model, and PD Watts, uh, but they're a free software suite that enable detailed performance and financial modeling for a variety of different renewable energy system types. I'll obviously focus primarily on photovoltaics here, uh, but there will be some honorable mention for a couple of other technologies towards the end. Uh, it's available as a desktop application and a variety of different other programmatic ways to access it as well. The code is open source. We have a software development kit. Thank you for defining that earlier. Um, and wrappers in a variety of languages, including a PySAM package that allows you to just interact with it similar to a uh, native, any other Python package. Um, I like to include this slide because it sort of explains a variety of different technologies and use cases and financial models that we're trying to deal with as a software tool. Um, the SAM desktop application, which is one of the ways to access the tool, is uh, open every two minutes around the world. And the PV Watts API is hit 17.5 million times per month or more. Um, so that gives you an idea of sort of the, the breadth and the, you know, uh, section of the industry that we're really trying to help here with these data that we have available. Um, similar to PDLib, who we try to coordinate with closely. We have a variety of Google Scholar citations. Um, so really enabling industrial and research sectors. And with that, I can jump into the actual improvements. Um, we have added the a transient thermal model for sub-hourly simulations. So Sam can simulate your PV model down to one minute currently. Um, we used Matt Perlman's model. Um, to deal with the thermal impacts of uh, the sub hourly simulations that we're working on for, and that kicks in for time steps starting at 20 minutes and below. And we also thank you, Kevin Anderson, for some help on this front, but we've implemented an improved backtracking algorithm. Uh, and with that does come the ability to define at least a single simple slope across the system. So no longer assuming the flat ground. Uh, we have a variety of exciting improvements upcoming in the bifacial model that's available in SAM. So right now, reminder for folks who haven't heard from me in three years, uh, we have uh, just a view factor model implemented that's relatively simple um, based on the Bill Marion model. And we're going to be adding some new features to it in this upcoming release. Um, so the ability to model the electrical mismatch on the rear side due to the irradiance uh, profile across the rear side of the module, shading calculations from the type of racking structure that you have, uh, multi-albedo surface on the ground. So if you were to install different plants, for example, for agrovoltaic uh, applications, or even just surface coverings that might not cover the whole ground, uh, we'll be able to represent that. Uh, and then edge effects as well, instead of assuming that the entire array is behaving the same way uniformly. Um, another big and recent improvement is in the PV Watts model, which also lives under the SAM larger umbrella. Um, we've upgraded to PV Watts version 8, which is a big underlying model change for people who are interacting with the API. Don't worry, I'm not changing your inputs and outputs, at least not much, and they're all optional. Um, but we have new features. Uh, thanks in part to my colleague Aaron Dovos, who was uh, scripted a lot at the beginning of this. Um, we now have the ability to model by facial panels within PV Watts itself, so a much simpler subset of inputs uh, to enable a snow model and wind stow tracking and monthly soiling, whereas before we sort of restricted PV Watts users to the very simple here's an annual D rate. Um, with some of the recent releases, we've also expanded the underlying weather data that's available through PV Watts, both at the website and the API. Um, as Manage It was mentioned this morning, they have several new sources in the NSRDB, which is what we use for the weather data underlying PV Watts API. 
API. So that global extent has extended for us as well. Uh, and the big overhaul on the coding side was that we've jettisoned some of the older PV form based models, if that rings bells for people um, that were in the uh, PV blocks code and we replaced them with uh, some assumptions that call the same models as the detailed PV module. So this results in some better agreement um, between the detailed model and the simple model that we have in PV watts um, and allows for sort of more industry backed understanding of how those models are working. Uh, this fall, to switch realms a little bit, we will be releasing a new PV uncertainty model. Um, so shout out to Cliff, who uh, he and I just completed a project together um, to formulate this model that's going into the SAM user interface and will be available in the open source code for anyone interested in looking in detail at the methodology. Um, but what it allows you to do is combine uh, simulating a number of different weather files. So instead of just being stuck with your one TMY, for example, uh, you could simulate 10, 20 years of data and then combine it with the annual uncertainty factors that many of us are used to dealing with in the industry when you're calculating a B90, for, for example. Um, so combining those methodologies in a uh, sort of robust yet calculationally fast way um, allows you to take a look at P90s or other probability of exceedance values from the combination of those two effects. Uh, so this is the first iteration of this. Um, we had a stakeholder group as part of this project that did inform a lot of how the final implementation looked, um, but we're definitely always happy for feedback on this and we're hoping that this is sort of the first step in helping the industry convene a little bit more on a standard methodology and terminology for some of these uncertainty factors. Um, and I'll note that Cliff and Matt, as part of that project, did some really great work that they presented at PVSC on solar resource uncertainty for Cliff and then uncertainty factors of bifacial systems for Matt's part. So I would encourage you to look up both of those papers for a little bit more um, information on uncertainty factors that can go into this model. Uh, to switch realms a little bit, a lot of the work in the past couple of years for SAM has been in the world of batteries. Um, so I know many of you are involved on the battery side as well, not just EV side, uh, especially as that they tend to get deployed more in the recent years. Um, so we have two new battery technologies worth mentioning here. We've implemented a standalone electric battery. So previously, the battery had to be coupled to a PV system, uh, either DC or AC coupled. Um, but we've added the ability to just model it on its own, um, obviously for energy arbitrage type purposes. And then we've also added um, in conjunction with our concentrating solar power team, a standalone electric thermal storage model. Um, and I have a link to a paper that has a lot more detail than I am able to give in that realm of technology. Um, a lot of the other exciting work has been in the realm of battery dispatch algorithms. So we have a variety of automated, not optimized, but automated uh, dispatch algorithms, depending on whether your battery is front of the meter or behind the meter. We have models for both. Um, but the dispatch of the battery is obviously one of the most important things in calculating its potential value. So we've been doing a lot of work on that front. Uh, shout out to both Ethry and Southern Company who developed a PV smoothing algorithm um, and then partnered with us to implement it in SAM in conjunction with our detailed battery model. So you can dispatch the battery to smooth the ramp rates in your PV system, um, which is a super interesting new way to look at uh, potential value of adding a battery to a PV plant. We have a new uh, battery dispatch algorithm that now responds to the actual utility rate prices involved. So previously, peak shaving algorithms looked just at the peak of your actual electric load that might not coincide with necessarily your highest utility rate band, uh, depending on what type of building you have. So this algorithm is still a heuristic approach um, that better considers forecasts for load and price uh, for your behind the meter system and allows you to dispatch the battery in the most valuable way. Um, and Brian Merlis poster, who many of you I think stopped by uh, describes 
a little bit more about um, both of these dispatch algorithms, actually. And then lastly, for those of you who are familiar with NREL's REOPT tool, uh, that does do a linearized battery model, but then returns an optimal battery size and dispatch. Um, we've added the ability to automatically hit their API from within the SAM user interface to get a more optimal battery sizing and dispatch that you can then run through SAM's more detailed model and take a look at um, the performance of the battery and also the financials associated with that. Um, we've also been busy on the front of sort of grid and resiliency capabilities. Um, SAM is involved in a lot of NREL studies sort of on that front, so it makes sense to bring some of those features into the user interface as well. Um, we've recently implemented the ability to specify grid outages uh, in conjunction with some work in Puerto Rico, where grid outages are very important when you're sizing your system. Um, and you can rest the battery during those times to only meet critical loads that you can specify either as a percentage of your normal electric load or on a time series basis. Uh, we also are now able to calculate some additional resiliency metrics. So how long could a specific battery size ride you through an outage, um, which is a metric of interest when trying to uh, appropriately size a battery for different applications. Uh, and we've also enabled uh, grid interconnection limits uh, that allow you to, for example, if you're trying to retrofit a battery into an existing interconnection agreement, um, examine the effect limits on your system performance. And then this is sort of my battery model miscellaneous page because there's always a lot to do in that realm. Um, Matt added the levelized cost of storage metric. So for people who have dealt for a long time with LCUE, LCOS is similar, but trickier <laughs> in many ways because it depends very heavily on your dispatch. Um, but it is one of the one of the metrics that people use to evaluate battery storage. Um, we've also improved battery degradation modeling, uh, coming in great part out of the vehicles group at NREL. So they're really obviously concerned with what how a battery degrades in a vehicle, and we're able to take advantage of a lot of that research and translate some of those models into our standalone storage model. And then there is a forthcoming report on validating the battery model. So any model should always be asked for how good does it actually perform against real world data. Um, so another plug for Brian's poster, I know the poster session has already passed, but the poster is still up there. Um, or you can bother Brian himself and he'll give you a summary. Uh, and then a quick mention of some of the other parts of SAM that are relevant to folks in this room possibly. One is in the realm of financial models. We have recently added a new community solar financial model. So that really looks at the perspective, both from the community solar developers point of view, as well as the community solar participants point of view. Um, this is a model we're really hoping, we released last year, and we're really hoping to work with industry on uh, the use cases and what might be missing to really help um, drive forward solar adoption across the country. And then we've also added what we call the merchant plant. So this is a representation of a PV plant or other type of plant in SAM that doesn't uh, have necessarily a power purchase agreement with their utility. So you're participating directly in the market. Um, and with that, we also have implemented the ability to access NRL's Cambium data set, which uh, is a series of model data into the future, but can serve as sort of proxies for potential market prices to help with some of those analyses. And then, as I said, honorable mention, uh, new technology model. We, thanks to some funding from Southern Company, uh, implemented a PV plus battery plus fuel cell model within SAM. So that's um, an interesting way to look at some of the interactions between that type of system. And then we've also been busy in the world of marine energy. So possibly the exact antithesis of PV, I'm not quite sure, um, but we have models for both wave and tidal power that we've been working on recently within the model. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, and with that, I'll bring it to my special shout outs page. This is how you're going to find both Brian and Matt later. They are our new SAM team members, which means they've joined since we've met last, but they've both been here for 
over two years now at this point. Um, so feel free to find them and say hi. And then I want to thank the people in this room and sort of globally that have contributed both to our open source code. Thank you. We know C++ is not an easy language, so we appreciate it. Um, and then also to our PySAM package, we have a lot of contributors on that front as well, um, particularly with some of the help functions that are available um, to download from the NSRD, RDB, et cetera. So thank you to all of our contributors.